Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and today we're gonna to talk about access point placement. The other day I was browsing Reddit and I came across a post in the Ubiquity subreddit where someone posted a picture of their, you know, around 1500 square foot house floor plan. And they said, I have two access points. Where should I put them? So I thought it's a good opportunity to say, hey, let's go ahead and do this for real in the Ubiquity Design Center and you guys can see exactly where I personally would place two access points uh, in a house of this size, which is a good test because it's about a, you know, a pretty moderate size house, 1500 square feet. So here we have that Reddit post. I have two access points for a new 1575 square foot house. Where do I place them? And of course, like anything on Reddit, this caused a lot of conversation and different people saying different things and giving their opinion. So the first thing that I did was I took that entire floor plan and I popped it into the Unified Design Center at design.ui.com. Uh, then I took about five or 10 minutes and I added all of the exterior walls, the interior walls, as well as the windows or sort of break spaces, right? Which is either a window or a door. Uh, because this is going to definitely affect the wireless signals in any organization. Now these red lines here that you can see are exterior walls. And I assumed that the garage here has exterior walls running all the way up past the uh, foyer here. But the back wall might also be an exterior wall. Sometimes when an architect is designing the garage, they kind of make that separate from the rest of the house. And they, this right here by the uh, walk-in closet might also be an exterior wall. I don't have that information, so I just took a guess and we made it an interior wall. But for your own floor plans, it's really a good idea to understand where you have interior versus exterior walls. Uh, interior walls, at least here in the United States, are typically drywall and wood framing. Exterior walls might be something more, or if they are still just drywall and wood framing, they usually have some sort of stucco or side paneling or something like that on them that will definitely affect a wireless signal. So again, relatively medium-sized house here, and he has two access points. Now, I don't know exactly which access points uh, the Reddit poster had, uh, but I'm gonna assume for the purposes of this design, we're gonna go with the uh, U6 light access points. These are 99 bucks. They're really good for just any sort of standard home environment. And if you've got 1500 square feet and two U6 lights in that house, you should have plenty of coverage uh, for the whole thing. So to do that, we wanna come up here to the floor plan settings. And we're gonna scroll down until we find access points. And then we're just gonna find our Unify 6 light. We're gonna click on it and we're just gonna pop two out here. Now, I'm gonna put one in the dining room and one down here in the foyer, and then we will sort of move these around uh, based on the signal strength. Okay, so let me zoom out just a little bit. There we go. So I have these two in here. Now, here's my thinking behind the placement of these two devices. So first of all, the dining room device, this family room, kitchen, dining room area, is a nice wide open space. So having it really anywhere in here is gonna be fine, but we also wanna potentially cover the back patio, which is why I put it near the window here. And then we also wanna cover the master bedroom over here. We don't necessarily have to cover, you know, the walk-in closet and all the way down here. Uh, probably do wanna cover the bathroom, because let's face it, everyone takes their smart devices into the bathroom, uh, but the second access point down here is a little bit more interesting. It should be kind of in this general area, but it's debatable exactly where it should go. You might wanna put it inside this hallway where the two bedrooms are to give the best coverage to those two bedrooms, but now you're sort of you know, leaving the garage and the foyer and the front porch out of that equation. So for me, I think I would put it just outside this break in the wall between bedroom two and three. That way you definitely have the foyer, you have bedroom one, bedroom, or bedroom two, bedroom three, and then you should get some coverage in the two car garage. And being that the front door is right here, uh, you know, you might get coverage sort of out on the patio as well. Although it doesn't look like they have a window out front. The only windows I see are uh, out of the bedrooms and then across the back here, the family room, etc. Now that we've taken a guess at the placement, let's look at the coverage to do that, we open up the filter settings down here in the bottom right hand corner, and then we can turn on our two gigahertz or five gigahertz coverage. Let's look at two gigahertz first. 
So we want to try to get everything bathed in like the light blue at the worst, you know, hopefully just the green down here, the sort of minus 60 dBm. And it looks like we have pretty much full coverage uh, for 2.4 gigahertz. And again, you can move this around and kind of just see like, where do we have like the best coverage? Uh, even putting it in the center of the foyer here kind of reduces the strength in bedroom too. So just having it right up here uh, keeps both bedrooms covered. And what you want to think about here is where are people going to be spending the most amount of time? And that's going to be, you know, the bedrooms, the bathrooms, or these common areas up here, family room, dining room. So looking up here in the dining room, yeah, this is great. This is going to be plenty of coverage for this area. The only place that's kind of iffy is this portion of the master bedroom. So like, for instance, if you had the master bed right here by this front window, I don't know if that's a slider or what, but if you, whatever you have sort of in this area might not get the best coverage uh, because you've got this exterior wall here kind of blocking some of that signal. Uh, but you know, just keep that in mind. And if you wanted to, you can always sort of, you know, move this more central in the dining room. But what you want to avoid is look at the red sections here. See the red here? That's the strongest signal. Now, if I move it too close over here, we are now overlapping our signal, which is not really the end of the world. It's not the most terrible thing in the world to overlap your signal. And usually in a home environment, you're just gonna have these access points on like auto settings. So auto should, for the most part, with only two access points in a relatively small area, should sort of handle any overlap by adjusting channels, by adjusting the, you know, the signal strength or the output of the devices themselves. But there is a problem with doing this, especially with some devices that are very aggressive about selecting which access point uh, is closest to them. So let's imagine here that you're sitting in bedroom number two. Now we look at these two different access points if they're overlapping too much, like see, we've got kind of this like light and dark orange area overlapping for both of these access points. If your access points are overlapping too much and you have something like an iPhone, iPhones in particular are very aggressive about picking the strongest access point that they're gonna connect to. And so they might flip flop between these access points a lot if you're in kind of one of those overlapping coverage zones. So to avoid that, again, what I would do is probably take this dining room one up here and post it up about like so. And then if you wanted to even further fine tune it, you can turn down the output power of, I would actually turn down the output power of the dining room access point as opposed to the foyer access point. And the reason, my thinking behind that is because this is a more open area, right? With fewer obstructions. The only real obstruction for the people that are gonna be using the access point in the dining room are anyone in the bedroom over here. They might not get the best signal if you tune down the power. Uh, but again, it's more of an art than a science, right? Play with, change your settings, play with those settings, test those settings, and then make adjustments if necessary. But I think this is pretty good because the strongest signal uh, from both of these access points is just barely overlapping uh, between the two, which I think is just about perfect. Uh, let's now take a look at the five gigahertz coverage. So 2.4 gigahertz has more range and penetrates walls and obstacles better than five gigahertz. Let's go ahead and pop over to five gigahertz and see how it looks. Now here we see kind of a different story, right? There are some areas of weaker coverage. Like, so if you're sitting in this bedroom and if your bed is up here kind of towards the back window, five gigahertz might have some trouble getting out to this access point. I mean, in all likelihood, it's gonna be totally fine. And most devices, if they're having trouble in the five gigahertz, will just pop over to the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum and they will continue to work perfectly fine. But, uh, you know, these are just things that you wanna keep in mind. As far as the family room goes, I'm assuming that this is a window or a slider. You're probably not gonna have like a couch right in front of that area. The couch is most likely gonna be sort of like maybe positioned like here, maybe facing this wall where you'd have a TV, and that's gonna have great coverage from this access point right here. Should be totally fine for anything in the family room, dining room, or kitchen. Now, where you also may lose some stuff is the garage. Now, what I would do is, 
it, I guess it really depends on whether or not you need strong wireless coverage in your garage. Like for me personally, I like to have strong wireless coverage in the garage. My you know car connects to wireless for its updates. Uh, I do work out in the garage on a very regular basis where it's nice to have you know music streaming. It's nice to have you know the ability to search the web for my cell phone or whatever. So I like to have strong wireless in the garage, which you can always do is if you have a setup like this and you're not getting the signal you need in something like your garage, just pop another access point out there, right? And then even tune down the power so that the access point in the garage only covers the garage, right? So there's another thing that you could do, but given that we have these two access points to work with only as per the Reddit post, uh, I think the garage is gonna be fine with the two gigahertz coverage. And you look at this coverage right here, think about it this way, there's a two car garage, right? So you're gonna have one car, two car, and if you're gonna have any sort of workbench or anything where you're actually doing work out in the garage, it's likely gonna be up against this top wall right here. And that top wall right there should have plenty of coverage uh, by virtue of this uh, access point in the foyer. I should mention also that while I am using the Ubiquiti Design Center and I'm using Ubiquiti access points for the purposes of this demonstration, you can use something like Design Center, put access points out, and then use some other brand's access points too. The wireless coverage, as long as the signal strength of the access points that you choose to put in the Design Center are similar to the ones that you're gonna be using in real life, you can use basically any brand access point and probably get very, very similar results. All right, so there you have it, a real quick look at what I would do in this 1500 square foot house scenario that was posed by someone on Reddit. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Do you disagree with anything that I said? Would you have placed them differently? Uh, and I think I can even put a link to this project, a public link to this project, so that you guys can take a look at what I did. Uh, if I can figure that out with the Design Center, I will also put a link to that down below. All right, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name is Chris, The Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.